I'm Felipe Pampuri, a musician from Sao Paulo, Brazil, who for the past 10 years been living in LA, making music and exploring sounds. I'm also the creator of Beatronix FX, a company some of you may know by the crazy and unique fuzz pedals or the videos with bees jamming at the studio. Today I'm gonna take you guys to visit some of my friends' studios so we can check out what they have on their pedal collections. But first, I'll start by showing you guys our hive, where we have our studio and where all the Bitronix pedals are made. Okay, so right behind our studio we have the actual hive where we make the pedals and where the bees work. Let's see what they are doing. On our first stop we're gonna go visit my friend Joe Barisi. Joe is a legendary producer who has worked with bands like Tool, Slipknot, Avengers Sevenfold, Bad Religion, among many others. He also has a really incredible studio. As you walk in, you are surrounded by piles and piles of gear. A lot of it are true pieces of rock and roll history. So wizards are like really badass marshals. Talking like what Marshall should be making amps like at this point. I just got a 6L61, but that's, that one is uh, uh, not an EL84, but a, a 6V6 amp. And it's fucking really good, man. It's 25 watts. Just dirty, but articulate at the same time. Yeah. Super, super good amps. That one was underwater. The brown one. I remember yeah. it on a flood and shit. Yeah. And, uh, was, was that how it got brown? Yeah, that's <laughs> no. how it got Is fucking it really? brown, yeah. And he, uh, it, was it white? It was white. Originally. Shit. <laughs> that's funny. And uh, he cleaned it up a little and it lit coals and fucking just leave it. <laughs> That's so, um, but he, the guy, he worked for ACDC for years, he was yeah. their, their guitar guy. He's got tons of analog gear, guitars, amps, and obviously what we came for. Hundreds and hundreds of guitar pedals. As usual, Joe surprised me with some really cool pedals. This time we're checking out the Phase X by Color Sound. It was a pedal made in the late 70s in the UK, and it produces a very deep and rich phase effect. Very cool thing about the swarm is when you add a modulation after it. It will take a little bit of the harshness of the fuzz and make things really interesting. As I was walking through the studio, I see this little Altoid box with a pedal built in it. So I asked Joe what was that, and he told me it was a George Tripp's boost that he had made for him. I for sure wanted to check that one out. Still in that phase territory, Joe pulls out this really cool color sound Doppleton. It's a very rare and unique effect I had never seen or heard of, but it really sounds out of this world. Another cool finding was the Afterneath by Earthquaker Devices, a pedal that I had seen online but I had never played one. This pedal produces a reverb sound like no other. You 
understand how to play to the sound. Like a lot of musicians don't yeah. understand that. Oh, this, this pedal, it is that, right? I mean, this pedal, it is, you gotta play for the pedal. Whenever the pedal tells you something, right. you gotta hit that you, note. It does a rhythm, you do the rhythm. Yeah, exactly. Like some guys just can't do that. They just play it and you're just like, you put that thing up in front of them and they're just like, they can't make it musical. I had a great time hanging out with Joe. Every time I'm with him, I learn a bunch. And also it's great to be around one of her music idols. One thing I know for sure is that this visit's gonna cost me a bunch of money. I really really liked a lot of those pedals and I'm gonna be looking to pick up some for my own pedal board. On our next stop, I went to see my friend Anthony J. Rasta. Anthony is a composer and producer, he's also a multi-instrumentalist based in the Laurel Canyon area of Los Angeles. Anthony has worked with many acts like Duran Duran, Elton John and has also worked on soundtracks of movies like The Twilight, The Scream, among many others. He's also a big collector of gear and has a ton of pedals that we can check it out. Right before I left the hive to meet Anthony, he called me and told me we would have a very special guest. Joey Santiago, guitarist from the Pixies, heard that we were coming by and decided to join us for this jam. And that got me super excited. Cool. I dig it. <laughs> I can put through this filter. As you come in on Anthony's studio, you'll find a lot of old and cool vintage synths. And this is from Russia's the Polyvox. It's, it's kind of like a mini move vibe. It's got a really cool growl to it. And I've got a lot of like circuit bent stuff. Um, I don't know where they all are. It's like circuit bent, like stuff like this. Yeah. Casios with, with patch bays. You, you plug them in, they do all kinds of unpredictable, weird things. It's really That's cool. cool, man. It's and here's, here's another one. This is a drum machine from the 80s. All right. That I have I circuit bent. That. It's like a Yamaha, and it, you can sync it up and you know play beats and stuff. But it does crazy like nine inch nails type stuff. Sick. Like, it's just wild. He also got a bunch of guitars. Each one is on a different tuning, and pedals are literally everywhere. A cool finding was this little one known thing, which was a kit that a friend of Anthony's put together. Somewhat of a sample and hold that does all this kind of crazy noises. I cannot really describe it, you just gotta hear it. What is that thing? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Another really cool unit we got to try is from a brand called Neon Egg. It's called the Planetarium. It is a stereo reverb, chorus and echo that then runs into a compressor with external sidechain. This thing really looks and sounds like it came from another world. That's why it's called the Planetarium. Next was the Count to 5 from Montreal Assembly. This delay and sampler pedal has three main modes which allow for pitch delays, random sampling and layered looping. And then it's got like a reverse delay like you heard and a regeneration like the, on your video you ca captured some of that. It's, it, it also has a looper in it which is this mode down, it turns to a red but uh, it's an amazing pedal, people people love it or hate it. It's like it, it can make, make your guitar sound like birds flying away and all kinds of things. Sounds 
Bob O'Reilly. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> this visit was great. I got to hang with Anthony and see everything that he's about. He really likes to try textures and different things and different sounds. He's all about finding the sounds and creating the song around the sounds. We also got to hang with Joey, hear his insights, his approach, and we even got to give him some bees. I, I, what I use is just tremolo, delays, and um, not much boutique stuff. Yeah. I got a Swart, Swart makes... Um, uh, space Tone is the coolest thing ever. Yeah, the Space Tone, and also their uh, overdrive pedal is really cool. Maybe not pedal. overdrive, uh, a boost, boost pedal. It's really good. Our next visit had to happen online. What's happening, man? Everything good? Yeah, everything great, man. How are you? I called my friend Tim Lefebvre. He's a bass player who has played on literally some of my favorite records. By that I mean, he played on Black Star from David Bowie. Did you play, was there like any pedals in special that you played on Black Star? Like anything that you remember using that you were like, oh, that, that was cool? Or... Yeah, um, Boss OC2. I used the dark glass uh, microtubes a little bit. Um, and I used the, Octo you know, the, the three leaf audio Octover. But oh. no, other than that, it was a lot of, Clean, a lot of clean. I used I used this the, my Yamaha uh, EM80 amp on the thing, so like that helped get some weird sounds. He played with Sting, Empire of the Sun, Nowhere, like really a lot of people that I really like, and I'm a big fan of him and his style of playing. He also loves pedals and effects, and he's always going in for different sounds. He even got his own signature pedal with three leaf audio. A while back, when he came to see us at the Hive, I gave him a walk to hell. And now it was really cool to hear him playing it. Tim combined the Walk the Hell with a Roto Vibe and the Red Panda Tensor. The Tensor is some kind of crazy looper where you can stretch, rewind and do all kinds of crazy things with it. Just hear what he did. Dude, Thanks, brother. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, of course. It. Yeah. Anytime. On our last stop, we could not choose anywhere different than NRG Recording and J Bound Garner. Jay and I have been friends for over 10 years. In fact, Jay is one of the reasons why I moved into the US. He signed my band many years ago, and then ever since we have worked on many records together. JB is an incredible producer and mixer. He has worked with acts like Papa Roach, Evanescence, Bush, among many, many others. He's also the owner of NRG Recording, which is pretty much a tempo for music recording in the Los Angeles scene. Not to mention, my brother Daniel, who also founded Beatronics with me, is the head sound engineer for the studio. So when I'm there, I truly feel like home. So, yeah, so here's the guitar closet. There's some of the guitars from the studio. I'll show you guys the ones I most use and most love and you know, uh, so start with my favorite. Where is it? Junior double cut. I think it's a 68. This thing's beautiful. It sounds incredible. Was used on pretty much every record you see on the wall, so it's pretty sick. Which I really like. There's some nice PRSs. I remember we got this PRSs when when we're tracking my band, I think second record or first record. And PRS and then these guitars and yeah, that's beautiful. I remember these solved a big problem back in the day whenever we were tracking, you know, uh, stuff that was tuned down, like these guitars held up or tuned so well that they get got used a lot. And this is probably my favorite piece of gear out of the instruments. It's a 59 P bass that just sounds unbelievable. It resonates so well, it's light. Uh, it just feels great. It's pretty much on literally every record that was tracked here. People in some track at least use this bass. So this thing is nice. Uh, so this is the infamous amp hallway here. Uh, we get a bunch of stuff. Uh, I'm attached actually to a lot of these amps. Uh, back in the day, 
uh, I don't know, maybe eight years ago or 10 years ago, uh, me and Jace went on an amp hunt. Like, so for a while we were buying a bunch of amps and like, and Jay gave me a, you know, a, the opportunity to actually say, just pick some stuff and we'll find some really cool ones. Like this is especially a OR120. Uh, it was pretty cool. Me and Jay we went to this guy's house and we went to buy, he had two OR120s and it was maybe like an hour and a half away from here. Uh, so we drove there, we got to the guy's house and we couldn't make a deal with the guy, right? And we were left there super bummed out because we didn't buy the amp. Uh, on the way back, I'm on my phone looking for one, and then I found this one in a store in San Francisco. So we called them while we were driving back, and I was like, dude, what's up with this amp? And they said, oh, dude, it's super cool. We ended up buying from a store in San Francisco. Summer Zodiac. Uh, that amp, I found it in the UK. I bought it off uh, eBay UK. And it shipped here. It was kind of all over the place, kind of all apart. And my friend Bob Dixon actually put it all together. Uh, it's a really cool amp. It sounds really unique. Uh, it's actually the same model that was used for House of the Rising Sun. So it has that, that whole vibe and tone. It has a really cool good vibrato. Some weird like uh, filters on it. See it? It even popped up. But this one was one that I bought it for myself and ended up selling to Jay at some point. So it's a really cool amp. Now onto the pedals, NRG literally has drawers of pedals with some really cool, unique, interesting and vintage stuff. That's cool. That's a really cool old Roger Mayer plus face. Uh, this of course. Yeah. <laughs> That's used on a bunch of Top secret. stuff and really cool. Top secret. Oh, this is a nice one. Yeah. Old Tom Bender. Jet Phaser. Dude, this is sick. Yeah. And the phase five too. This is this is more rare. Some more here. That's a really cool thing. Oh the echo rock, the yeah. Benson. Every time I open those drawers, I get reminded of how cool are this trio of pedals that I made for energy a while back. The Octa Hive carries the pattern of the wallpaper from the lounge bee. The overhive has the pattern of the flooring of Studio B. And the Walk to Hell got NRG's vintage logo. Now we're gonna combine these bees with some other pedals. Up at first is a classic, the ADA Flanger. Next, we got this vintage boss pedal. It's called the Chorus Ensemble. It is a Bucket Brigade Chorus and Vibrato that has a really, really warm sound. And at last we got to try the exotic Robotalk. This pedal was based on the famous Oberheim VCF, which was also sold as the Maestro Filter Sample and Hold. Today, I got to go around and see some of my friends, hang at their studios, show you guys some of their gears, their guitars, amps, pedals. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope this in some way inspires you to make music. Let's not forget, the gear is all cool, but at the end of the day, we're all here to make music, gather and have a good time. So go put your gear to use and be yourself. Thanks for watching.